when I was a kid, I had an irrational fear of our basement. Though, if I do say so myself, our basement was kind of scary for a kid. It was a pretty big basement. There was an L-shaped couch right in the middle of the basement that sat right in front of a wooden support column. In front of the couch was the big old box TV we had down there, which had all of our video game consoles plugged into. The layout of the basement was set up as a big circle that went around the couch, basically. There was a booth and table in one corner, an old bar in the other corner, which had the door to the laundry room behind it, and then in the other corner, closest to the stairs, was the doorway to my dad's little workout room. My dad rented out the upstairs of the house to an old lady named Ruth, so we only had access to the first floor and the basements. My dad would usually hang out in the living room on the first floor, hence why our video games were all downstairs on the crappy TV, because our dad didn't really hang out down there. I'm the youngest sibling. I have two older brothers. I was anywhere from six to eight years old when this happened. My older brothers weren't home, so they must have been having playdates with other kids. It was just my mom and I home at the time. My dad was likely at work. Usually I'd be playing video games with my brothers in the basement, so I wouldn't be scared. But since I was alone, I remember being kind of creeped out as I walked down the stairs. That basement door sucked because it wouldn't stay open. By default, it would just slowly creep shut unless something was propped in front of the door to keep it open. So it just made me feel even more isolated from the upstairs and my mom. I was playing whatever old video games I was into at the time, alone on that gray fluffy couch. Any little sound in the basement would make me pause my game and look in whatever direction I heard it. There would always be creepy sounds that would come from the laundry room, and even though I grew to expect them, they'd still sometimes creep me out. They were usually familiar sounds though, and so when I heard an unusual sound come from inside the laundry room, I paused my game. It wasn't the sound of the laundry machine or the boiler clacking. It was the sound of something dropping to the floor and bouncing once or twice. I remember jumping off the couch and running upstairs to find my mom, saying there's someone in the basement. And I remember my mom's calm reaction, asking me what happens, and then explaining to me that nobody is down there. To make me feel better, she went back down to the basement with me, and she opened the door to the laundry room, turned on the light, and looked inside for a few seconds. Then she shut the door and said there's no one in there. So naturally, I felt better, and she went back upstairs, and I went back to playing video games. I can't remember how much time passed before I went back upstairs to eat a snack. My mom was already preparing dinner. I remember it being dark out now, which only added to my fear of the basement. The basement had two small windows, which did allow some light in during the day. So at night, it was just completely pitch black down there. I did end up going back down there, though. And then, eventually, I heard the sound of the heater in the laundry room turn on, only it was extremely loud. I turned around and noticed the laundry room door was now open. I got off the couch and slowly walked to the laundry room door. It was pitch black inside of there. I was scared to turn on the light. I just wanted to shut the door. I gathered up enough courage to run at the door and slam it shut and then run back to the couch. For some reason, I just felt safer on the couch guess for whatever reason, I didn't once think that it was strange that the door was magically open now even after my mom had closed it earlier. The next thing I remember was hearing a man's voice from behind me, and at first, my brain didn't register what the fuck I just heard. It didn't seem real at first. I turned around and saw some sickly looking man sitting in the booth in the corner of the basement, with his arm on the table and his head resting on his fist. He said, my god, how you've grown. I was frozen stiff. I couldn't even scream. I just looked at the man in the corner with my mouth hanging open, twitching. He slowly stood up in this crooked, hunched over posture, and it seemed like he was slowly starting to walk towards me as he said, your mother won't let me see you guys. I finally was able to scream and I just bolted for the stairs. I was screaming mom the whole way up to the kitchen. I slammed the basement door and locked it. I screamed and cried to my mom that there's a man downstairs. I saw the look in her face, and she was petrified. She called 911, and I strangely don't remember what happened to the moments before the police showed up. I just remember a bunch of police officers getting there and going down to the basement. I was with my mom and a police officer in a safe room while they found him. And the man they found was my uncle. My estranged uncle, my mom's brother, who was basically excommunicated from our family for being a child rapist. 
Our parents never wanted him anywhere near us, nor did my mom want any contact with him. He broke into the house and had been hiding in the basement for God knows how long. I didn't even know his face, as the last time I'd seen him I was a baby. I haven't seen him since then. He went back to prison for another four years for another sex crime. We don't know where he is now. It was approaching Halloween. We were in the middle of October. My cousin Andy's birthday is October 15th. So for his 12th birthday, we all went over to our Uncle John and Aunt Melissa's house as they were throwing him a family birthday party. We have a pretty big family, and so our family gatherings can often get hectic. It was still warm outside, so the party was mostly in the backyard. Their house is pretty big, and we always used to love playing hide-and-seek type games because of it. Andy and I are the same age. My older brother Chase is two years older than me. He would play with us too. Our other cousins were a little older, but they'd still play with us too. We just make teams and take turns as hiders and seekers and give each other time limits to find the opposing hiding team. If you were found, you'd have a chance to run outside to the backyard to be safe if you managed to not get tagged. We could use the whole house minus our aunt's and uncle's bedroom, and I'm not exaggerating when I say there were hundreds of places to hide. In the basement, there's a separate room that's considered Aunt Melissa's fashion room, as we call it. She's a fashion designer, and inside of it she has a bunch of mannequins with different pieces of clothing she's designed. Some are full body mannequins, others are just torsos without heads and regular stands underneath them. She also has some studio lights, some official camera equipment, and a green screen drop. We had been playing the game for a little while already. Chase and I were hiding now. We both chose to hide in the basement. Chase hid somewhere in the main section of the basement while I hid in the fashion room. I actually grabbed two blankets from the ottoman in the basement and brought them into the fashion room, one for me to hide under, and the other one I was going to throw over one of the mannequins as a decoy. With the blanket thrown over it, it genuinely looked like it could be a person hiding underneath. I thought it would be a funny little gotcha moment whenever someone yanked the sheet off of it. So I got into my hiding position under a desk in the corner of the room, and I hid under the blanket. Now it was a waiting game. That was honestly a big chunk of the game, if your hiding spot was good. After quite a long time, I heard commotion outside in the main room of the basement as Chase and one of my cousins were laughing and yelling, presumably as Chase was being chased around the basement. I heard them then stomping up the stairs. By the sound of it, Chase was trying to make it to the yard without being tagged. But after that, I waited in silence for over 10 minutes easily. I was getting uncomfortable in this position and quite honestly bored. Finally, Chase came downstairs into the room and called my name, and then he said the food was being served outside. So the game was over. I was starving. I hurriedly rushed upstairs into the backyard where all the catered food was now out and being served. At some point after eating and having a conversation with Aunt Melissa, I remembered that I totally left those two blankets in her fashion room. Most importantly, that I left one over her mannequin, which she would not be happy about. So after going to the bathroom, I went back down to the basement and to the fashion room, where I turned on the light and saw that the blanket was no longer on that mannequin, but rather the blanket was covering something else. It appeared to be another mannequin, though this one seemed to be propped in a seated position, which I wasn't aware of any mannequins that were in a seated position. The closer I got, I started to realize that it was moving, and I heard breathing. On top of that, there was this funky smell that wasn't there before. There was a person under there. But who? I laughed and said, who is that? They didn't answer. I felt this feeling of uneasiness growing in my stomach. I looked down to see if I could see the shoes they were wearing. But what I saw was the bare feet of a black person. Nobody at this party was black. I turned and headed for the door. I rushed back outside and said to my uncle to call the police, there's someone in the basement. Others overheard me and panic quickly ensued. My uncle and a few others rushed down to the basement, I followed behind. When we got to Aunt Melissa's fashion room, the blanket was now on the floor and whoever was underneath it was gone. I swore up and down someone was just underneath it, explaining the bare feet and the smell. A bunch of family members searched the whole house and ultimately my uncle called the police taking my claims very seriously. When the police showed up, it was kind of a whole scene and everyone at the party was concerned. 
Neighbors even came out to see if everything was okay. Every possible hiding place was checked, and no one was in the house. I didn't make it up though. It was genuine what I saw, and I just wish he did turn up so that everyone would have seen I was right. Even if mostly everyone did believe me, I still just wanted them to see what I saw for themselves. During parties, they leave the doors unlocked since family circulating in and out for hours, so it's no shocker that someone off the street could have just walked right in. Maybe a homeless person, which would account for the smell. The whole thing still just felt so crazy, and it's a haunting memory for sure. This story takes place when I was 9 years old. I'm now almost 25. I was at my great-grandfather's house in Idaho during Christmas break, visiting family and whatnot. This was also the first year my mom's boyfriend came with us because my parents had divorced the summer before. My grandpa used to live in a small Indian reservation town which has about 1,000 people. My grandpa's house was a small two-story house that had a lot of field and forest. It was a beautiful house and property, and I miss it dearly. Anyway, about a day after we got there, my aunt, uncle, and cousins who lived in the same town as us came and surprised us by driving 10 hours to visit with us as well after telling us they weren't going to be able to because of work. It was fun because at the time, my cousins and I were close. One night, my uncle, my step-aunt, and my cousin, who lived just next door to my grandpa, came over and visited with everybody. The grown-ups started talking grown-up talk. So me and my cousins, Sam who was 9, Evan who was 12, and Kennedy who was 10, decided to go downstairs to the basement and play our monster game. The way this game was played is where Sam and Evan were monsters and they hid down in the basement with the lights completely off, and then Kennedy and I would have to find them. They would make noises so we could kind of have easy access to find them, but not fully. Then if we got near them, they would make monster noises and chase Kennedy and I, and we had to go back to the top of the stairs, which was our safe zone. I know it was a kind of stupid game thinking about it now, but at the time, it was pretty scary, but really fun. Anyway, Sam and Evan went downstairs to hide, and they told us to wait two minutes before going down to start finding them. Kennedy and I waited upstairs for two minutes, and then we went downstairs to find Sam and Evan. Kennedy went down first, and we started looking for them. We just did our normal thing for this game. It was completely pitch black downstairs. The only light down there was the pellet stove and the moon shining through the window. Although we knew it was just our cousins hiding, it was still pretty scary just because it was pitch black and completely silent. About five minutes later, Sam and Evan jump out and scare us and then they chased us. We go back upstairs and decided to play another round. We did our normal thing by waiting for two minutes, then heading downstairs. This time, I went first. As we went downstairs, we heard Evan or Sam hit the wall, which made me jump. We continued walking down, when I noticed a figure standing outside the window. I stopped walking and put my hand out to stop Kennedy. She got a little irritated and said, come on, why are you stopping? I didn't say anything, but I pointed towards the window, showing her the figure. Kennedy noticed the figure, then she whispered, Sam, Evan, we need you to stop the game, there's someone standing outside. Surprisingly, Sam responded to us. I figured he would have wanted to continue the game and not say anything. He said, you guys are lying, you're just scared. I was starting to get upset because they wouldn't believe us. Guys, seriously, look at the window above the TV. Then we saw Sam and Evan emerge from underneath the ping pong table my grandpa had for us, and they looked up. Evan just laughed a little and called us pussies, saying it's probably Uncle Stan just outside smoking. I knew it wasn't my Uncle Stan because he always smoked outside on the front porch, right by the front door. I then told Evan that. Sam then said very annoyed, then it's probably Grandpa just checking out the house because you know him. He's always checking to see if the house has any problems. If you guys are worried about it, then go upstairs and check. I then go upstairs to check, but I pretend that I'm just looking for something. I go into the living room, and everyone I knew that was there were all in the living room. It wasn't my Uncle Stan, nor my grandpa, or anybody. Everyone was sitting in the living room. My stomach dropped. There was definitely someone out there. I didn't want to tell the adults because I was worried they wouldn't believe me. I go back downstairs as I'm shaking, and I tell them, Guys, everyone's in the living room. No one is missing. There is someone out there. Sam and Evan finally realized this wasn't a joke, and their jokish facial expressions turned into scared expressions. Kennedy began to cry a little. 
I told her not to make too much noise. We all went to the top of the stairs to figure out what we should do. Of course, Sam and Evan were giving dumb ideas like shooting the guy or something. We didn't want to tell the adults, so we just stayed at the top for five minutes. Then we went back down. When we were back down, the figure was gone. We assumed that the figure just left and went their way. We decided we didn't want to play the game anymore, so we would just play ping pong instead. We turned the light onto the basement, and when they come on, we noticed the window was cracked open. I thought to myself, was the window cracked open this whole time? I looked towards the furniture, and my heart suddenly dropped. There was a man in his mid-forties, sitting in one of the sofa chairs, staring at us. We were so scared that we just stood there, frozen. The guy began smiling all creepy-like at us. He then began to stand, and then I yelled, run. We ran up the stairs and slammed the door to the basement. Then we ran into the living room, crying to our family that there was a man downstairs. One of my uncles, who was a cop, went and grabbed one of my grandpa's guns and headed downstairs. My uncle came back up after a few minutes and said there was no one down there, so we assumed he climbed back out the window and ran. The adults believed us when we said there was someone down there because outside there were footprints in the snow and they led to my grandpa's driveway. Nothing was stolen downstairs, so that was good. We were all so scared that we just sat with our moms and hugged them. That night when we went to bed, I was still afraid, so I slept in bed with my mom. My cousins and I haven't played that game since. My grandpa was pretty upset because he thought his windows couldn't be opened from the outside, but he was glad that my cousins and I weren't harmed. My grandfather passed away October of 2017, and I miss that guy dearly. But ever since that incident, I have always been afraid of going into any basement by myself, even as I've gotten older. Although I haven't been back to my grandpa's in almost a year, I still am scared of that basement, or any basement, to this day.